In this math talk, as promised, I said I would do one more example. So picking up where we left off, let's introduce a new problem which looks like this. Find the area of the circle that circumscribes the triangle with vertices P, negative 5, negative 2, Q, 3, 6, and R, 7, 4. Once again, before I get started or before I can really jump into this problem, I really need an, an accurate diagram to help me visualize what I'm dealing with. Placing the points P, Q, and R on my grid, I then construct my triangle. And it looks like this. Now, a, a circle that circumscribes a triangle is a circle that passes through all three vertices of the triangle. So your circle is going to look something like this. What's interesting is that any triangle can be circumscribed by a circle. If we're trying to find the area of that circle, we need the radius of the circle. We get the radius from the center. The question becomes, how do you locate the center of the circle if you have points P, Q, and R? Well, what you need to recognize is that P, Q is a chord of the circle, and Q, R is a chord of the circle. P, R is as well, but I'm going to work with the P, Q, and the Q, R. Now, if we were to construct the right bisector of both P, Q, and Q, R, those would pass through what is the center of the circle. So I've done exactly that. I've placed a point M, which is the midpoint of PQ, placed a point N, which is the midpoint of QR, and drawn two lines that are perpendicular both to PQ and QR. There is a point of intersection, and I will mark that C. And what you need to recognize is that that C, that location C, is equidistant from all three points P, Q, and R. So now it's a matter of locating point C. If I know point C, I can find the length of any one of those radii, C to R, C to Q, or C to P. It doesn't really matter. All I need are those coordinates. Well, once again, it's like the last two problems that I did. I have two lines that are intersecting in a diagram, and I need to find the equation of those two lines in order to find that point of intersection. So here I go. Starting with the coordinates of M, I recognize it is the midpoint of line segment PQ. So I use my midpoint formula, which is just to say that I take the average of the X coordinates of P and Q and the average of the Y coordinates of P and Q, and I get coordinates negative 1 and 2. Once again, I drew my diagram fairly accurately, and it looks like M does have a coordinates pretty darn close to negative 1, 2. Now, using that point, and the slope of line segment PQ, I should be able to get the equation of the line passing through M and C. And it's going to work very much like what we did in the last example. I find the slope of PQ, and I recognize that MC is perpendicular to PQ. So it goes like this. The slope of PQ, when I substitute in the values for point Q and point P, works out to a slope of 1. Well, the negative reciprocal of 1 is negative 1. So the slope of MC must be negative 1. From there, I use my point slope form of a line, which we've now done multiple times. So I substitute in negative 1 equals y subtract 2, which is the y coordinate of midpoint M, over x subtract negative 1, negative 1 being the x coordinate of midpoint M. Cross multiplying and simplifying, I get a really simple equation, which is just simply x plus y equals 1. And I suggest you try it yourself and verify that that's what you get. The next step is to repeat the entire process again for the right bisector to QR. In other words, that line through N and C that is perpendicular to QR. Now, I would suggest that you pause the video, try it entirely yourself, and verify that you get the same answer that I get. So here come my answers. N has coordinates 5 and 5. The slope of QR works out to be negative 1 half. So the negative reciprocal of that will be 2. So the slope of NC is 2 using that slope of 2 and the point 5, 5 in the point slope form of a line. I get that 2X subtract 5 equals Y subtract 5, further isolating. I get that 2x subtract y equals 5. That will be equation 2. At this point, it proceeds very much like what we did with finding the centroid as well as finding the area 
of the parallelogram. We have to find the point of intersection of these two lines so we can locate C. And so it goes like this. I write down my two equations, x plus y equals 1, 2x minus y equals 5. I can straight up add those two equations, and I get 3x equals 6, x equals 2, substituting in x equals 2 in equation 1, and I get 2 plus y equals 1, or y equals negative 1. And very easily, I locate the center of the circle to be at 2 and negative 1, and that looks pretty representative as what you see in my diagram. So the final step is to calculate area. Well, in order to get area, I need radius. And so I look at the length of C to P. I could have done C to Q or C to R, but I'm going to use C to P using the coordinates of point P and the coordinates of point C. I get that the length of CP is the square root of 50. Now using my area formula for a circle, which is area equals pi r squared, we get pi times the square root of 50 squared, we get 50 pi units squared. And that's all there is to that problem. Once again, there's a lot of work involved here because we have to find equations of lines, we use midpoints, we use length, we use slope. We have in fact used almost all of our formulae that I have listed to the right to answer this question. A great problem that tests almost all of your skills. Hopefully with those three examples, you will be well equipped to answer just about any kind of problem that is thrown at you in analytic geometry. Now the best thing you can do is do as many problems as you can get your hands on. Thanks for watching. See you soon.